Welcome to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. Comment is the big conversation. It's the great debate, but it can only be a debate if you join in. That's why, above all, I need your telephone calls. 44208-601-4555. You call us, we'll call you back, establish a clear line, and remember, if you get on the television with me, the volume on your television has to be at zero, or I will have to press on. You can SMS the show on 4478-0008066, or you can email me at comment at presstv.co.uk. As I was flying out of Beirut, based, uh, coming back to London uh, just yesterday morning, I might have heard the explosion. I didn't, but down below me, yet another car bomb was sowing carnage amongst the people of the Shiite suburb of South Beirut. Outside or nearby the Iranian Cultural Center, although of course the targets were anybody who was passing by. Several were killed, many were maimed, new terror from the Syrian war spilled into Lebanon. Regularly now, almost weekly, the Takfiri fanatic extremists who have murdered so many people, so many tens of thousands, maybe scores of thousands of people in Syria are bringing their terror into Lebanon. It hasn't mattered to them that a new government has just been formed in Lebanon by cross-community negotiation and agreement. It doesn't matter to them that a new Sunni prime minister has taken power in Lebanon, a new cabinet in which the Lebanese resistance Hezbollah has only one member and which gave up its previous claims to a third of the cabinet. It didn't matter to these fanatic extremists that Lebanon thought that a new government might just bring in a new era where they were not looking over their shoulder for exploding motor cars. Why has the terror in Syria spilled into Lebanon? Well, the answer is actually linked to my second topic this evening, which is what they call Saudi Arabia. You may have seen the picture, you may even have laughed at it, of Prince Charles, the heir to the British throne, done up like a Saudi monarch, dancing with his sword with the Saudi royals. You may well have found it amusing. I certainly did, but that just might be my sense of humor. A more serious question is what should the British and Saudi monarchies be doing instead of dancing with their swords? After all, Prince Charles is the heir to the throne of a British state which is going around the world destroying people's lives, which can't keep its pensioners warm in the winter time, but can set fire to other people's countries with monotonous regularity, which, along with its buddy, the United States of America, has invaded country after country after country, and which, with its buddy, the United States of America, continues to arm and fund and diplomatically, politically bankroll the Zionist settler state they call Israel. And did Prince Charles ponder just for a moment what use the Saudis put these swords to when they're not dancing with them? Did Prince Charles ask the Saudi monarchs if these were the same kind of swords that the Takfiri fanatics use to cut off people's heads in Syria because they're of a different religion or a different strain of the same religion in Syria? Did Prince Charles ask the Saudi kings if these were the same kind of swords that these Takfiri fanatics funded and armed by Saudi Arabia used to cut open the chests of human beings, cut out their hearts and eat them on YouTube so that people could see just how religious they were. 
Did Prince Charles ask these medieval, kleptocratic, barbaric tyrants if these were the same kind of swords that they used to behead poor Pakistani and Bengali and other foreign workers on Friday afternoons, their blood spurting into the sand for the discouragement of others. Did Prince Charles ask these Saudi tyrants if the takfiris danced with their swords before they drew the blood of innocence? Use these swords to defile and despoil and destroy the holy places of Christians in Syria, of minority religions in Syria. Did Prince Charles ask them? I doubt it, don't you? What a grisly, grotesque spectacle of an unelected heir to the unelected throne of Britain and the barbarians who call themselves the custodians of the two holiest places in Islam, but use their position to fill their pockets with the billions that they have stolen from the people of Arabia. I doubt it. These are the two questions we are asking tonight, and they are inextricably, ineluctably linked as Eric in Germany may or may not agree. Eric, welcome to the show, my friend. Good evening, Mr. Galloway. I'm very happy, as usual, to, to uh, be in, uh, your, on your program. Thank you. Mr. Galloway, as you uh, certainly uh, correctly said, these two topics, Lebanon and Saudi Arabia, are very much uh, linked. And uh, you mentioned it uh, very well. Um, uh, yet, uh, please allow me sir, to say, you asked uh, uh, the question if Prince Charles asked himself or them uh, uh, what uh, all these things they did. Sir, I can answer this question if you uh, allow me. The Prince Charles would never ask such questions because the Prince Charles is a part to the party and a part of the game. And he knows very, very well, who he is and who Saudis are, as he knows who his father and grandfathers were and who the fathers and grandfathers of Saudis are. But, Mr. Galloway, if you allow me, I was uh, 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 sometimes in London, I was uh, studying there, and I know a bit about the society uh, in London, I know about the Bangladeshi people, Pakistani people, and many other hard-working uh, people who were living in London and really believe in their religion and humbly go to the Regent uh, Mosque, I can remember. Therefore, Mr. Galloway, if you allow me, I will ask all your questions these people who really honestly believe in their religion I tell them you people you who believe in Allah and you believe in your great religion did you ask yourself where are these jihadis in Central Africa two and a half million Muslims are being evacuated tonight I saw on a sky channel an old Muslim man who was crying and saying people help us they are cutting us like tomatoes and that is in Central Africa that is an Islamic Holocaust where are you you jihadis don't you ask yourself people who are hand in hand with Bush people who are hand in hand with Prince Charles people who are hand in hand with Mr. Hollande if his hand is not in the hand of his new lover these people you call jihadists and Muslims don't you ask yourself what is going on don't you see that they are ruining the Islamic world all over the place they are putting fire on your home and they are encycling you in, in your home and in Regent's Park the agents of the Saudi of the Saudi who are hand in hand with these murderers they recruit you and send you and you will killed and after the Zionist agenda is over no one wants to, to hear anything from you like they did it in Afghanistan. That Magnificent. Question, Magnificent Eric. I, I really could not have made that any more powerful. 
eloquent than you just did. Central African Republic, Muslims are being massacred and the Western governments are turning away. But even more despicable, as you rightly say, these jihadists are murdering Muslims in Syria whilst Muslims are being murdered in the Central African Republic and about it they have nothing to say, never mind do. Muslims, Rohingya people in Burma are being massacred. Where's the jihad there? Muslims are being massacred by other Muslims in Syria, in Lebanon. The Muslims are being massacred in Palestine, in Gaza. Where's the jihad from these people? Instead, as you say, they're hand in hand with tyrannical, hypocritical, barbarous, barbarians in the so-called Saudi Arabian royal house and their allies, George Bush, Tony Blair, and all the rest of them. Eric, my blood's up this evening, and you got it boiling even more. Thanks for the call. Bagheer is in Copenhagen. Bagheer, what would you like to say? Hi, George. Uh, I'll say Prince Charles' uh, visit to Saudi Arabia was uh, is condemnable, and I'm, I'm very angry about seeing how foolish you look like. You know, it's very wor worrying to just because George Bush, uh, you, George Galloway, you came from Lebanon, and yesterday uh, a terrorist attack uh, occurred. So, yeah, what? you see this uh, uh, crazy uh, prince you have in the uh, UK, George. He had said nothing about uh, what happened uh, yesterday. No. And he's, do he's doing nothing. Nothing. To, uh, or or let, let's take it from a different angle, Bagheer. Yeah. 13 of the 19 mass murderers on 9-11... 2001 were from the very same Saudi Arabia. They used sharp blades to cut the throats of young women, air stewardesses, on those airplanes as they flew them to destruction and mass murder in the Twin Towers. Why doesn't Prince Charles ask how that came to happen? Out of which well this poison is coming. He knows, as Eric in Germany said, where that well is located. That young man that was murdered, butchered in broad daylight on the streets of South London in Woolwich, they cut his head off, these takfiri fanatics. Where do they get their money? Where do they get their mindset? Where do they get the political support, the very same Saudi Arabia where Prince Charles was dancing like an idiot, like a clown, just yesterday. That's my point of view. You might have yourselves a different one. We're asking about the British-Saudi sword dance and the British and Saudi monarchies representing two states which in their own way are exporting Takfiri, extremist, fanaticism, bloodthirsty, murderous, mutilators. Didn't Prince Charles give it a moment's thought? And we're asking about the spillover from the murder and mayhem paid for by Saudi Arabia in Syria onto the streets of Lebanon. The very week, the day after, a new Saudi uh, a Sunni prime minister was in post in Beirut. A new government was formed. A government in which the pro-Western trend in Lebanese politics was restored to almost absolute power in the cabinet because of the wisdom of the Lebanese resistance and its leader, Syed Hassan Nasrallah. Ahmed's on the line in Tehran, wants to talk about Syria and Lebanon. Ahmed, welcome to the show. Ahmed, right, you're welcome. Go on. Dear George. Yes. Uh, thank you. First of all, let me uh, appreciate 
uh, your true and kind consideration about the Muslim situation in our world today. And secondly, uh, let us Iranians have your presence in our country once. For example, could you inform us about the uh, near future uh, probable visit of you in Iran so we can have some meetings and gatherings with your presence in, in universities and etc. by the way. Inshallah, and, it's been, uh, it's been some been years there. since I was in Iran. I've only, I think, been there twice. So perhaps it's uh, overdue another visit. Yes, go ahead, Ahmad. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, as you said that extremism is firing up the Muslim world everywhere, uh, I just wanted to quote uh, the recent meeting between uh, Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah and Saad Hariri in Lebanon, uh, although there has been a very few release of news uh, from this meeting, but uh, uh, accordingly, the result has been uh, the government, the new government of Lebanon. I want your analysis about the meeting. And uh, another point which I really see positive is the absence of Bandar bin Sultan recently during the last month or two uh, from the political scene of the era. And another point that I want you to um, comment and inform us about is the real role of the Western think tanks, for example, the Chatham House, the Brookings, Ca Carnegie, uh, or even U.S. Institute of, Institute of Peace. I think that we Muslims, or in general all uh, public around the world, should know these institutes who play a significant role as the think tanks of the Western powers. And actually, their policies differentiate through time. For example, they wanted to topple Bashar al-Assad in, in less than a, a month or two or three, but it's more than three years, so they have changed their strategy. And even the Western powers are very peculiar and are worried, are concerned about the inflation of extremism and jihadist groups. So they are changing. I, I think they have to con reconsider some of the things they have taken for granted. And I want your comments on these issues. I mean, okay, Ahmed, thank you very uh, much for a very time. nice call and a personal uh, invitation to your country. Uh, let me just deal with one of your points because we need to get on to hear more callers. And that is the rationale behind the decision of Hezbollah to back down and allow a new government to be formed in Lebanon where they do not have the blocking majority that they had before. You'll recall uh, the previous cabinet had one third of its members from Hezbollah. And on terms of the number of votes that they get, terms of the size and importance of the community that they represent in Lebanon, that was uh, very far from an over-representation. But now Hezbollah has only one member in the government. The March 14th tendency, the pro-Western Sunni Muslim trend within Lebanon has all the important posts now in the cabinet in Lebanon. And I support that because Syed Hassan is a very, very wise man. He considered that what was necessary was to try and take some tension out of the political situation in Lebanon, that this might help the security situation in Lebanon, that it might allow the presidential election in just three months' time to go ahead in Lebanon, whereas that timetable was endangered by a continuation of the situation in which there was no government at all in Lebanon for the last 11 months, the longest ever in Lebanese history. And Said Hassan made a very powerful speech whilst I was there in the country this week, and he made clear where the resistance stands on matters regional, vis-a-vis -vis Syria, on Lebanese matters, and on Palestinian matters. He devoted much, maybe most, of his powerful address to the issue of occupied Palestine, if only other Arab rulers would do the same. Let me go to the aforementioned Saudi Arabia and talk to Musa. Musa, welcome to the show. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. 
Go on, Musa. Turn Hallelujah. your volume down. Turn the volume down. Yeah, go on. Thank you for the good work that you are doing. Nobody can reward you unless Almighty, Almighty Allah can reward you. Inshallah, thank you. Just please, I beg you, can you kindly me beg King Abdullah to tell his people to have mercy on Musa, turn your television your down, family. please. Turn your volume down to zero. Please, can you kindly tell King Abdullah to tell his people to have mercy on us? We, the foreigners that were in the country, judge, police people came. Same thing with the foreigners that were in the country. On the street, you see a police in a uniform, judge. Police supposed to save people's life, not to kill people. Judge, please, what you are doing is very bad, judge. We are in the country. We know that we are the foreigners. But if you give us time, we go back to our country. But the whole world, that is illegal. Okay, okay so look, Musa, you need, you need to go off loudspeaker. Go switch off loudspeaker on your phone while I'm answering uh, the first of your points. And I should have, in my opening remarks, made this more clear. The Saudi dictatorship is not just exporting terrorism around the world. It is suppressing its own people, whether Sunni or Shia, suppressing, oppressing, and robbing and stealing from its own people. The vast majority of people in Arabia are decent, good, God-fearing Muslim people. They don't deserve a dictatorship like they're living under. And these swords that they were dancing with, they use on their own people as well as they use them on others. Musa, try again. Give me your next point. Yeah, just, yeah. My next point is that just, just please, just tell them, they should just give us enough time to go back to our country. But how they are treating us, just, it's not fair. We go back, but we need extra patience. Like They're just pleading with them. You know, we see people, police chasing, catching, killing. It's not fair. Yeah, it's a holy country. Holy country. Well, look, that's, uh, that's a very heartfelt uh, plea. Musa, uh, there are so many things wrong in that country. It, we'd need to be a week, a whole week here on comment to discuss them all. Thanks for the call. Let's squeeze in Ali in New York before the break. It's a very short break, and Ali's call will have to be a short one. Go ahead, Ali. Hi, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. George. It has been a privilege. I have been trying hard for the last two, three months. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for attending my call. Welcome. Um, uh, I I know that our discussion is going on regarding Lebanon and regarding Saudi Arabia. Um, hello. Yes, go on. Okay. So, I mean, my fear is that, like, you know, I mean, what would be the end of this addition, which these tech theory groups are carrying on? Um, I hope that, you know, the Lebanon security forces would be able to deal it. But is there, a f is there their frustration now in Syria that they are going somewhere else to create issues? Oh, well, that's so uh, absolutely <laughs> certain, Ali. They're coming to New York and they're coming to London. The head of the CIA just told the Congress this very point. And in London, the British Foreign Office which sent these takfiris to Syria in the first place, having sent them 30 years ago to Afghanistan in the very first place, are now saying that the biggest single threat to British security is returning fanatics coming from Syria. You couldn't make it up, Ali. It's a policy that is close to insanity. So yes, when they are defeated in Syria, they're coming to a town or city near you and me and everybody watching this show. We're talking about Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia and Britain. I'll be back after a very short news bulletin, just three minutes. So don't go away. There'll be more comment here on Press TV right after this. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. Tonight, we are asking why has the terror in Syria spilled into Lebanon in the wake of yet another grisly car bombing which killed and maimed at will? And entirely randomly, absolutely no one could know who was going to be passing that vehicle at that moment in time. We're asking why when Muslims are being slaughtered by non-Muslims in the Central African Republic, in Burma, in Palestine, in Gaza, why these jihadists, as they call themselves, in my opinion, it's a misnomer, are concentrating on killing other Muslims in other Muslim countries. And we're talking about the sword dance, the bizarre, grotesque sword dance between Prince Charles and the Saudi dictatorship. Those swords, of course, are used next door in Bahrain to massacre the democracy protesters there. These swords are used on 9-11 on board the aircraft to cut the throats of the air crew uh, when they hijack the airplanes. These swords are used to cut open chests and deep hearts in the conflict in Syria. These swords are used to murder people in Syria and in Lebanon for entirely sectarian reasons. And we're wondering if Prince Charles ever gave that a single moment's thought. Let's ask Ramzan in Wales. Ramzan, always welcome. Go ahead, sir. Assalamu alaikum to you, George. How are you? Walaikum salam. I'm in a good uh, forum good tonight, I think. Good. That's better. No, that's very nice. George, what it is, the um, <coughs> Saudi monarchy, right? Uh, you can't call them they are uh, Muslim freedom fighters, right? They are a uh, missionaries paid by the Saudi government, right, to go around killing Muslims, right? Not any other person killing Muslims. For simple reason, they want to put a fear in the Muslim ummah that uh, Saudi, uh, they want to promote their faith, their way of uh, uh, interpretation of Islam. And them dancing to the uh, to to uh, to Prince Charles and Prince Charles dancing uh, with them is like the monkeys are dancing with one another, right? The reason why because the Saudi is using their money, right, to pay the buy our uh, ammunition from the British government. So we have to dance along our uh, Prince Charles have to dance. That's right. You're along right. Them. That's you why know? Charles was dancing. He, exactly. he, was, he was dancing for money, actually. Exactly, exactly. So therefore, that's what it is. And uh, it's sad, you know, that the, uh, what you just said earlier on, the 11 of the terrorist bombers or the suicide uh, on the planes were Saudi. Nobody went and attacked Saudi Arabia no. because for simple reason, the Saudi government have invested so much money in America, right? And that is the only reason why. It's the money. It's the money talk. It's nothing to do with the uh, uh, with yeah. human rights. And, no, you're right. Uh, what so uh, America brings out. Uh, it's uh, not Obama a, brings as out. As I you know. always say, Ramzan, it's not about the prophets. Peace be upon them. It's about the prophets and how to get a bigger piece of them. Ramzan, thanks for that call. Thank you, as indeed, always. Take care. Very Thank good you. to hear from you. We're talking about the British and Saudi monarchies. What should they have done? Instead, well, Britain could have announced there that it was going to stop invading and occupying Muslim countries, and it was going to stop supporting with money and weapons and diplomatic and political support the oppressors of Muslims in Burma, in the Central African Republic, and in Palestine. They could have, but they didn't. The Saudis could have announced that they were going to cease exporting terrorism around the world. They could have but they didn't. Nasser is in London. Why has the terror in Syria spilled into Lebanon, Nasser? Go ahead. Nasser? Hello? Yes, you're on the air, brother. Go ahead. Yes, good evening, uh, George. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, Go on. Uh, well, first I'll start with the, uh, the, uh, the poodle of the West, the poodle of the Zionists which is the, uh, the Saudis. Um, where, and when I say the Zionists are the oxygen for the Saudi, without them, they are not in a power. So their days 
basically are numbered. You see, they hang, they're hanging on them. Um, if you look what happening in Bahrain, there's a bunch of hypocrites who are responsible for thousands of, you know, uh, of dead, innocent children, women, old men, etc. Uh, they have thousands of prisoners of conscience in Bahrain. And when you look at the Prince of the United Kingdom, Great Bear, not mm -hmm. mentioning uh, the, um, the um, atrocities committed by the Saudis. So it tells you that they are the same in the same family. They are the same family. They well, they are. Different. They are, Nasir, and that's a very good point because the Saudis invaded Bahrain to help the Saudi-backed dictatorship there to crush the democracy movement. Of course, they yeah. haven't succeeded, and democracy yeah. will come to Bahrain. But the British are deeply involved in that crime. David Cameron received the dictator of Bahrain with a red carpet in Downing Street. Britain is continuing to back. In fact, British retired in disgrace police officers from Scotland Yard are running the Bahrain police, which is a byword for torture and mutilation of prisoners. Britain is training the Saudi forces that invaded and occupied Bahrain. So you're right, perhaps the dance was entirely explicable. Perhaps there was nothing surprising about this dance, dancing on the graves of Muslims all over the world. Nasir, welcome. Thanks very much for that contribution. We're talking about Syria, about Lebanon, about Saudi Arabia, and about Prince Charles, who done himself up like a Saudi tyrant, although he was considerably slimmer than the men he was dancing with, but he knew how to hold that Saudi sword. The images are burned into my brain with Charles with the sword, <laughs> really. I don't know who advises uh, people like that. Abdullah is in Libya. We need to hear from him. Another great Western success story. Abdullah in Libya, welcome, go ahead. Yeah, happy to meet you again, Mr. Gallery. Welcome, go ahead, sir. Okay. I want to comment about Lebanon. Yeah. Because we were believed that there was a difference between two people. So all what was happened, we put the blame on them. But for now, we now realize that <coughs> it's not them. It was another person who sit down and check their life, the way their life is going normal, progressing. Hezbollah is not a terrible group. The group that wants to fight for poor people, that they are breaking their houses, taking their land for farming, taking their water of drinking, teasing their children of going to school, having ID card, check border before go to school. So for today we fall in love with them. As a matter of fact, I don't know all this. And today I know, but what I'm saying is that Russia has to be very intelligent not to divert their mind into Ukraine and forget about Syria. We have to pray. Well, the, the, Ukraine, uh, the Ukraine conflict is directly related to Syria. The United States is challenging the interests of Russia, of Russian-speaking people in the Ukraine, directly as a result of the failure of American policy in Syria. It's as if they're saying, we've lost on the Syrian track, we've lost on the Iranian track, so we're going to have a go right next to you, right in your next door neighborhood. Abdullah in Libya, thanks. Joseph is in London. Joseph, welcome to the show. Joseph? Hello, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing Good fine, family. go ahead, sir, you're on the air. Yeah, I feel sad that what's happening in Syria, and uh, it's obviously despicable that uh, there's some jihadists who's going over there and destroy that country. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I don't think, Mr. George Galloway, I don't think you should politicise or you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't sort of, um, you know, I mean, sort of point the finger. I know you're a good man. I think you're a good man, but I don't think you should polit politicise it. What do you think? I shouldn't point the finger at who? Uh, I mean, the, whatever, the bad time that's happening over there. Uh, saying, oh, this and this is happening, you shouldn't sort of make it, I don't know, uh, uh, play like um, a devil advocate. I'm not playing the devil's advocate. I'm telling you exactly what I feel. And it's exactly what I always felt from yeah, the first no. day until the last day. And by the way, Joseph, I felt the same way about Iraq. Some of the people who now want me to support a Western attack on Syria were marching side by side with me against the same Western attack upon Iraq. It's them that's the hypocrites, not me. I was against a Western attack on Iraq, on Libya, on Syria, on Palestine, on Lebanon, I'm against Western attacks on all Muslim countries. Some people want to be against Western attacks in some cases and in favor of Western attacks in others. Some people say the Syrian government is illegitimate because its leader comes from a minority sect. But in Bahrain, a dictator is entitled to rule even though he's from a minority sect. I'm in favor of democracy in Syria and in Bahrain. Let the people alone choose their leaders. That's what we need. I'm not here saying that I'm a fan or a supporter of the government in Syria. I'm not. And you can go on YouTube and type my name in, plus Syria, and you will see exactly what I think. But as I often put it, Joseph, and here I'm pointing the finger, I'm not with Bashar, I'm against his enemies. His enemies, the Zionist state they call Israel, his enemies, the medieval barbarism of the Saudi dictatorship and the other potentates in that neighborhood. I'm against his enemies in United States, French and British imperialism, seeking to reoccupy, reinvade, reexploit countries from which they were driven in the anti-colonial period. So you ask me, Joseph, not to point fingers. What else can we do? We have to blame the people who are truly to blame. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. And um, uh, basically, we, you know, we, we have to basically stand shoulder, shoulder, shoulder to shoulder to people who's, uh, who are oppressed and who are also having a hard time or, or, or don't have their voice heard. So I am for democracy, I am for peace, and, but you know, I mean, there's other dark players. Who are, well, there are, you know, but I'll tell you this, Joseph, as you have a, a Christian name, I had a conversation, you can see it on YouTube, with Mother Agnes Mariam of the Cross of the Archdiocese of Homs, Hama, and Yabrud, a saintly woman. While I was talking to her, her sisters, nuns, nuns, were taken hostage by these head-chopping, heart-eating extremists. Christian churches, monasteries, convents, Sunni mosques, Sunni clerics, Shiite holy places have been despoiled 
They've tried even to get to the bones of companions of the prophet. A man who had kissed the face of the prophet Muhammad, his bones were trashed by these people with their narrow, fanatic interpretation of Islam. I've got to point the finger, Joseph. If I don't point it, who will point it? Who else in the British Parliament will speak like me? Who will say what needs to be said, if not me? And I'll tell you this, as long as God gives me breath, I'll be speaking out against injustice and tyranny everywhere that it is to be found. Thank you for the call. Nurdin is in Finland. Nurdin, welcome to the show. Nurdin? Yes. You're on the air. You're Hello. on television to the world. Come on, go on. No, it's not. I'm waiting for my turn. It's, it's not yet on me. It is. You're on the air right now. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but George, George, George Galloway is. is you're still talking. talking to you're talking to George Galloway right now, and. Hello. You're talking to George Galloway right now, and uh, many parts of the world. So please go ahead. Okay. Okay, George Galloway. Good evening, and nice to have you here once again. Thank you, sir. Please, my comments. I really want to make is the co the corrupt the corrupt and so-called leaders and self-claims of Muslims countries, Saudi Arabia, are disappointed people to the entirely Muslim world in the sense that Saudi Arabia has failed again and again for being the self-claim self of leaders of Muslims to unite the Muslim people from hunger, from, from hunger, from salvation, to save Muslims from being slaughtered, killed, booted out of their throat. But currently, what is happening in Central African Republic, the entirely Muslim country, including the so-called corrupt, corrupt Saudi Arabia, has really given a blind eye on what is happening in Central African Republic. I, as a Muslim, I, as an African, it, it is not about religion. It is about peace. Those people in Saudi, those people in, in Central Africa, in Central African Republic, have lived many, many years with their differences and sex, and yet they have been fought. But today we find out Christians have been slaughtered Muslims, killing their throat, calling them, and the so-called Saudi Arabia, who has been financing extremists, jihadists in Pal in, in Syria all over the world. Why are they not coming together? Well, they to haven't help. even said anything, never mind done anything, because they're to too help. busy doing something else somewhere else. They haven't lifted a finger to save the Muslim people in Burma. They haven't lifted a finger to save the Muslim people in Gaza. They haven't lifted a finger to save the Muslim people in the Central African Republic. In fact, they're belly dancing for the very people who are committing these atrocities. Nuruddin, thanks for your call in snowy Finland. I appreciate it. Mark is in less snowy Glasgow, at least I hope so. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi there. Go on. Uh, just to say, uh, my interpretation of uh, Charles Sachs, Coburg, Gotha, Windsor, uh, <laughs> dancing with uh, the monarchy in Saudi Arabia, uh, makes me think the only worst thing in a monarchy is a theocratic monarchy. Uh, but both, both sets of people in both countries are basically being ruled by the least amongst us. Uh, when you actually think, the, the most encouraging thing I've seen recently is when you actually start seeing that some students from poor underprivileged backgrounds are actually getting better exam results than, say, the middle class, which hopefully is a, a good sign that the people of the world will maybe one day stand up and actually fight the idea of royalty and monarchism. And the fact that Bandar Bush threatened the country of the United Kingdom with terrorist actions unless they dropped a serious fraud case into their 
their fraudulent practices with uh, the BA or uh, then he's out dancing with them. It's ridiculous. That's all I've got to say on the matter. Well, uh, Mark, uh, they didn't just threaten Britain. They threatened Russia, if you recall. They said that the Sochi Games could either be free of terrorism or under the threat of terrorism. And it all depended on what President Putin decided to do in relation to Syria. Bandar Bush is now in charge of terrorism and gangsterism around the world. And it was with his family that Saxe Coburg Windsor was dancing today. Let's get one last call in. Uh, Herr Hatch in Lebanon. Go ahead, please. Okay. Go on. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Go on. Um, Mr. George? Yes, sir. Go on. Uh, I, w uh, I would like to congratulate you on this show. Thank you. And, and the people of Press TV also. Thank you. I'm very okay. proud to be here. I have... Uh, I was I was like uh, following all your shows here and in Lebanon also. I have a question. Yeah. When Russia says when uh, Russia says to Sisi, like he congratulates him if he is going to become a president, why United States is saying you don't have the right to say who's going to be the president of Egypt, but in Syria and other places they say you have to step down because you are killing your people. It's the same people that Sisi is killing them. And another thing, I just want to understand, what does it mean, armed opposition? Is there, is there something called armed opposition? That's a very good point. In Ukraine, I'm watching what the hell is happening in Ukraine. Well, exactly. I'll tell you this. 50 police officers have been killed set on fire, stabbed, shot, killed. If that was happening in London, there would be a state of emergency and the entire British media would be wheeled out as part of a propaganda operation to isolate these terrorists. But in Ukraine, they're called opposition and the policemen are called the terrorists. You couldn't make it up. Thanks for that call from Lebanon. My heart goes out to the people of Lebanon, visited again by Saudi-sponsored terrorism this very week. May God bless Lebanon and Syria and all the places where all the people called us here tonight on comment. God willing, I'll be back next week. Hello, please comment. Yeah, I know, I know.